So, I was going to make my final video on Young Justice this week, but then I watched Raya and the Last Dragon and got so annoyed that I just had to make a video. Not at that movie specifically, though I did find it as a whole a bit underwhelming, but at something which is a thing in children's media in general, but has become much more common recently in big-budget Disney movies. It's in Frozen, it's in Tangled, it's in Big Hero 6, it's in Frozen 2, and it's in Raya and the Last Dragon. I am of course talking about the death fake-out. Now, before I get into this, let's establish some ground rules. I'm not going to include any Pixar movies in this because they, for the most part, know how to take a death and make it stick if they're going to include one in their story. They have some fake-outs here and there, but it's a lot less common overall than in pure Disney movies. I'm not counting characters being at death's door or at risk of dying with their fate remaining uncertain for a bit, a la Hector and Coco. In the interest of fairness, I'm also not counting death fakeouts that last only a split second, like Judy's in Zootopia. This also goes for actual deaths that are part of character backstory, like, honestly, so many Disney parents. I'm specifically talking main cast here. For that reason, villain deaths also don't count towards if a movie has a death in it or not. And finally, for it to count as a death fakeout, the audience can't be in on it. It's fine if the characters think a member of their party has died, but the audience knows otherwise. So, first things first, let's bring up the list of movies I'll be looking at and then strike out the ones where there's no death or death fake-out. Alright, cool. Now let me explain some of my reasoning here. I'm striking Snow White and Sleeping Beauty because those are both really old fairy tales that even most children will already know going into the movie, and also not really death so much as curses. I'm also striking out Hercules here because Meg's death isn't so much a fake-out as it's actively forwarding the plot and pretty clearly going to be reversed. Alright, excellent. That's cut down the number a fair bit. Now let's remove the ones that actually contain a proper meaningful death that sticks. So Bambi, The Lion King, Pocahontas, because I flat out refuse to consider Kokoom a villain of any kind and the whole movie is fucking gross. Go read up on the actual history if you've somehow lived under a rock for long enough to miss out on that fact. Atlantis, even though the death there belongs to a fairly minor character and his daughter isn't even there to mourn him. The Princess and the Frog even though Ray's death kind of has a silver lining on it with the new star showing up during his funeral, he's still gone out of the characters' lives for good. And Big Hero 6, which kind of negates its place on this list by also landing itself on the fake-out list. That's... not a lot. Now, looking at our list here, you might also have noticed that the closer we get to present day, the more frequent the fake-outs become. Yeah, I noticed that too. So let's talk about those fake-outs, yeah? First, Pinocchio in 1940. Pinocchio dies but gets revived by the Blue Fairy as a real boy. I don't actually know if that was their choice because I don't know if it was in the source material or not, so I don't really have any comment. Lady and the Tramp in 1955. Trusty gets struck by the wagon, and it's implied he's died before a fade to black and a reveal that nope, he's just got injured and he's on the mend now. The Jungle Book in 1967, Baloo gets almost beaten to death in his fight with Shere Khan, and oh boy, they pulled out all of the stops on this one. They had Mowgli crying over Baloo's supposed corpse and everything. Bagheera made a whole speech about life well-lived and dealing with death and heroic sacrifices that was played for a laugh because Baloo was alive the whole time. Robin Hood in 1973. Robin's implied to maybe be dead possibly for about a minute, but it was long enough for Little John to give up hope, so I'm counting it. Beauty and the Beast in 1991. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I need to explain this one, but that's like... 
five movies in the span of 51 years, it's really not a lot. And out of the five of them, only two contain any kind of magical component to the revival, so I'm not really annoyed about it. Besides, it's decently well balanced because all of the Disney movies that handled death best cropped up in the same time frame. But then, oh then, we get to the 2010s. Starting with Tangled in 2010, and Rapunzel's magical healing tear at the end of the movie. Now, did I want Eugene to die? Hell no, he's one of the best Disney characters ever, but it's still a fake out, so on the list it goes. Then we have Frozen in 2013, with Anna freezing solid to save Elsa and their sisterly love undoing the damage. A sweet scene, sure, if a little cliche. Big Hero 6 in 2014. Now, I already mentioned Tadashi's death in this, and I will grant the movie this, it handled that masterfully. Which is why the fact that they fake out killed Baymax bothers me almost more than some of the other examples on this list. Frozen 2 in 2019, which somehow managed to one-up itself in the death fakeouts as compared to Frozen. Sure, they tried to set up the water has memory thing, and fine, yeah, maybe it makes sense that Elsa wouldn't really die because she is the avatar and all that, but my god, they really did try their damnedest to convince us they'd actually killed both Elsa and Olaf. And finally, the movie which took this trope and beat me over the head with it so hard, I finally snapped and had to make a video. Raya and the Last Dragon in 2021. Because, see, what bothered me about Raya the most is that it already established a death state for its characters from which they could potentially return, being turned to stone by the Droon. So when Sisu was actually shot, I thought for a moment, oh my god, they actually killed her. When we spent the entire final climax of the movie without her, because she was dead, I thought, surely they can't bring her back, because every other character lost in this movie was turned to stone, so I thought, I thought, for sure, Sisu had to actually be dead, right? You know, I was so ready to be actually genuinely impressed by that, because it's extremely rare these days to kill off a major Disney character, without adding a silver lining to it outside of the first act. Rare as in, hasn't happened since 1995, rare. When everyone started being turned back from stone, including the dragons, I genuinely thought for a moment that that'd be it, because Sisu was the only character who'd actually properly died in the whole movie. But no. No, she just comes back. For no discernible reason. Every other movie on this list has at least tried to explain why a character could come back. There was enough of the Golden Flower's magic left in Rapunzel for her tear to heal Eugene, Anna and Elsa's sisterly love thawed Anna's frozen heart, Baymax is a computer program, Water has memory. Sure, some of these explanations are better than others, but they were at least there. Sisu just gets to come back. And that wasn't even enough for them. They had to take a moment where they honestly tried to fool the audience into thinking they might genuinely end a Disney movie by killing the entire world. Just... <sighs> that is five movies in the span of 11 years and now they've apparently graduated from somewhat believable excuses straight to don't worry about it, it's fine. Four out of the last five Disney princess movies have resurrected characters. Meanwhile, the last Disney princess movie to kill off a main character was 12 years ago, and the last Disney princess movie to kill off a main character without trying to put a silver lining on it was arguably never because of how Cocoaum is portrayed in Pocahontas, but if we're going to count that, then 25 years ago. Which is, as you can probably tell, just a little bit frustrating for me. It seems, to me at least, to stem from the idea that children are too fragile to be confronted with death. 
that they should be hidden away and sheltered from the world for as long as possible. And I get it, we want to protect kids. It's not fun seeing them upset or hurt, especially if you're a parent. But the answer is not to wrap them up in a cocoon and then spirit them away from the real world until they're 18 and then expect them to be able to deal. Kids are going to face hard times. They're going to have tragedy come into their life at some point or other. Whether it be a grandparent, a friend, a neighbor, a parent, at some point they are going to lose somebody. They're going to struggle and cry and you can't protect them forever. I mean, this is a much more minor point, but you might even be keeping them from some of their possible favorite movies. I watched Bridge to Terabithia at least three times when I was a child. Did it absolutely wreck me emotionally? Uh, yeah. And it probably would if I were to watch it again today. But I still liked it. If you want to see a movie series for children that handles death, and really loss and change of many different kinds, extremely well, Look no further than How to Train Your Dragon. I mean, the series is a masterpiece either way, but the way they handled Stoic's death was beautiful. So am I saying all children's movies have to contain death? N no, no, absolutely not. But I would kind of like them to engage with death more realistically if they're going to go there. If a kid's movie has to contain death, I'd honestly prefer it to be felt and have tangible consequences. After the character's dead, that's it. They're dead. They're not coming back, and you're never going to see them again. Because that's how death works. And at some point, children will have to learn that. And take it from me, that lesson's a hell of a lot easier to learn in real life if you've already seen it in media. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye.